What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about the return of serve. If the serve is the most important part of tennis, return of serve is the second most important part. Today we're going to show you four quick fixes to make your return of serve way stronger. Ironically, the return of serve is also the least practice. That's so right. pay attention, get out there, let's practice some returns. Let's get it. So the first thing I want to talk about here when we look at return of serve is how to time our split step to make sure we're able to move to the ball efficiently. Before I dive into that, super quick instruction on where to stand because you might be confused. So when you're returning serve, think about your outside pinky toe, putting it on the intersection of the baseline and the single sideline, and then depending on how big your opponent serves, back up. If I'm playing John Isner, maybe I'm way back towards the curtain, or if I'm playing Nate Bowling, maybe I'm nice. all the way up here towards the service line, just kidding. But yeah, if you've got a weaker server, obviously move forward, stronger server, move back. And in the warm-up, you may notice they're stronger out wide, they're stronger up the tee, but the starting position, until you have any information, this is a really good place to start. Back up if you know the serve's big, move forward if you know it's short, if they lean more towards the tee, maybe you're sliding over. But this is the general area of where you wanna be starting position-wise before the point starts. So getting into the first tip here, timing our feet and making the split step at the right time. This is everything. If you do this too early, you're gonna be sort of flustered and not know how to move to the ball. If you do it too late, you're gonna catch returns late. So this is really important. Not very complicated, but extremely important. What you wanna think about is zone in on your opponent as they're bouncing the ball and start paying attention to that ball in their hand. I like to start this process even before they bring the ball up to serve. The second they walk up to the baseline and they're bouncing that ball, my eyes are locked in on that tennis ball. And what I'm looking for, when that ball leaves their hand, just milliseconds, really literally the split second right before their racket makes contact with the ball, I want both of my feet to land on the ground. And the way I'm doing this is I'm landing on my toes as if you could slide a couple sheets of paper underneath both heels. I don't want to land flat-footed with my weight in my butt. I want to land on my toes in such a way that if I didn't make a decision, I would fall forward on my face because my momentum carried me forward. So again, as your opponent makes contact with the ball a millisecond before that, you're throwing all of your weight to your toes and your weight should be shifting forward. Once you see the direction the ball is going to move, you're going to transition your weight that way. Now the last thing to think about here is what you're doing before your feet hit the ground. And there's a couple of different options here. For me personally, I like to start with my right foot forward and I like to use my back foot to sort of catapult me into this split step. There's plenty of other players that just start like this and just jump forward. Really whatever you do here is more personal and more stylistic. The only thing that really matters is that your feet land right before your opponent makes contact and that your weight is on your toes ready to move towards the ball. Tip number two is all about keeping the swing path compact, shortening your swing. Now you've heard this, this is probably the most important tip that you're gonna get on the return of serve, but I just wanna clarify something because I think a lot of times when we hear this, um, we start thinking about like what we're doing on the backhand because the backhand's the weaker stroke. Well, may seem counterintuitive, but the backhand naturally shortens the swing path. So off the backhand, and, and this is for me specifically, my backhand return has always been my better side on the return, because naturally from the split step as the ball is coming in, with your reaching across your body with both hands, it's not as natural to get this big swing. So it becomes a lot easier to deflect the incoming pace. In fact, if you look on the Pro Tour, whether you're looking at ATP or WTA, fewer unforced errors, fewer mistakes are happening off the backhand wing because they are so compact. They're just not as likely to break down. So when you see players attacking the opponent's backhand, more times than not, they're not breaking down. It's actually the forehand that gets broken down because of the ability to move into a larger swing path. So what we wanna do on the forehand, as we split and we get ready to hit to prevent this big swing that inevitably is gonna break down because the ball's gonna come in hot and you're gonna be late on it, is just like your volleys, where you've probably heard handcuff your hands, volley as if your hands are handcuffed, do the same thing on the return. This helped my return an absolute ton playing collegiately. And the thought was, as I'm looking to make my move, I'm keeping the hands relatively together and then working through the shot. Because if my left hand goes with the racket, it's gonna feel super bizarre if all of a sudden I end up across my body this way. 
I think this is the mental cue that you need that'll help shorten that swing path because after all, just telling yourself to shorten the swing path, it's hard to know what you're doing unless you have something physical that you're identifying, such as keeping your non-dominant hand with the racket. Now, one of the drills that we love doing with the juniors in our academy is actually what you're seeing here in the demo is putting them against the curtain, getting them to take a small split step forward and then as I'm feeding the ball, making sure that their backswing doesn't hit the curtain. If they're hitting the backs, the, if they're hitting the, the curtain on their backswing, we know that it's just too large. It's teaching them to create a barrier and just allow them to swing forward to counteract the pace of the incoming serve. Tip three builds a little bit off of tip one, which as you may recall, was make sure you land on the balls of your feet. If you land on the balls of your feet, this is going to naturally propel you forward and that's what we need to see, because if you don't move forward and cut off the angle, what's going to happen is when your opponent serves out wide or towards the tee, you're going to be tracking that ball down the baseline and getting further and further out of position. So by moving forward, which is tip number three, and cutting the angle off, you're giving yourself better positioning and a better chance to stay in and win every point. Now, if this feels a little bit foreign to you or a little confusing, simplify it and just think about moving forward to the ball with small steps. Last one, but equally as important, is about your ready position. Not all ready positions are created equal. You, what I'm talking about is that we almost all have a ready position, right? Like, you know, maybe you're here or you're here. The height in which your ready position starts is dependent upon the serve that you're receiving. So what I'm talking about is that if you're getting a kick serve, then by all means, you want to make sure that you're getting your ready position nice and high. Right? We want to have less moving parts. We don't want the racket to have to travel you know, too far. So in this situation, if normally you start a little bit lower, but you're consistently getting a kicker on the second serve, now you've got to raise your racket up to the height of the ball. So instead, simply start with your racket at the height of the ball. Start in a higher position so you can defend easier. Now the inverse of that is if you're getting some heat, obviously you don't want to start way up here because the ball is going to work through the court, typically waist or, or lower, so start with the racket lower. You want to make sure that you're down here with the ball, get nice and low, and then from here you're working through the shot as opposed to having a high starting position and then having to drop the racket down to the position. So adjust your ready position according to the height of the ball to better prepare for it and better execute the return of serve. So those are our four tips to improve your return of serve. Get out there and work through them. It's not just about being more competitive in your opponent's serving game, but if you return well, it gives you confidence in your serve game. You don't feel like if you get broken, no, no, you know, the set's over. I promise you, if you get out there and put work when you return, you'll be more confident when serving and returning. That's right. A lot easier to hold serve if you know you're going to win most of your return games. And guys, as always, if you need somebody to practice with or a coach to work on this stuff with you, that's yeah. what we do. So check us out at playercourt.com. See you guys next time. See you guys.